I'm Lachlan Cahoon. I'm the group editor at Telecom Asia. I'm here in Singapore with Abby. He's the founder and the co-director of um, Circles Life, which has come from Liberty, Liberty Wireless and launched in the Singapore market in, uh, in May. Abby, you've got a bold vision statement to create a customer-centric mobile platform for consumers. What's your understanding of the needs of these digital consumers? Well, like you said, digital consumers, these are essentially consumers who are 20 to 45 years of age. And these are people who are used to buying everything online. They want to be served digitally. That means they want uh, Netflix instead of going to a video store to buy, say, CDs for that matter. Or they like to order cabs through Uber as opposed to calling TransCab in Singapore. So in that sense, they want to be served completely through the phone. And that's the need we're trying to serve, to be completely served online. And in that sense, everything should be seamless. From how you buy things, you don't want to go to a store and stand in a store for one hour to get to the front of the queue to be told your favorite phone is out of service, is not available. So you know that's a very small portion of what we're doing, say in terms of how you pay for things. You don't have to actually submit a pay slip, or you don't have to actually go online and make a payment. It should be automatically deducted. So when we think about this, we are serving these customers who want everything given to them, straight away customized for their needs. It's something that should, uh, um, that should allow them to have a telco that exists in the background, and it's not something that requires a lot of effort to get, because they are paying thousands of dollars as it is. So how do we provide something that's completely seamless for them? And that's kind of the need of these consumers, as we understand it. What differentiates your strategy and your offerings from other players in the market? I think it's part of the strategy. So when you think about us, there are essentially three things that we're looking at. One is a great consumer experience. And that's something we've really focused on. If you see how your buying experiences, buy, being able to buy something online in a very easy manner, in a very customized manner. Now, what do I mean by that? You can design your own phone plan. And that's a huge thing. You don't actually have to fall into these three, four buckets that say plan A, plan 3GB, 5GB. What if I have 5GB needs today, 7GB tomorrow? What if I don't want these gazillion SMSs that you're going to give me? I want these 100 SMSs and pay for only that. So seamless experience and a lot of flexibility. So that's one aspect, consumer-facing aspect. A second big wave in the telco space is with regards to the cloud technology. Everything is getting into the cloud. What does that mean? That means you can have a very, very full and heavy MVNO, something that delivers pretty much everything a telco would, so that the underlying layer of connectivity becomes nothing but a dump pipe. And all the innovation happens on the customer-facing layer. To be able to facilitate that, usually you would need hundreds of millions of dollars. With technology getting into the cloud, all of that is very easily available. You mentioned the ability to expand um, yeah. geographically. Is that on the agenda, and what, uh, what might you be, you be planning in that department? Absolutely. I think a model like this needs to be in every geography. And every, every you know, consumers, not just in Singapore, other geographies deserve better quality of service, better digital experience, and that's something that we have committed to doing. So when we say get more out of life, as you see behind us, it's more out of life not just for Singaporean consumers, although we are from here, so it matters a lot that we could give good service here, but consumers all over Asia, they deserve that. So the branding question, you started life as, as Liberty Wireless, and now, uh, now you're Circles Life. Uh, can you talk about the transition and the, and the branding and what that means? I think when we started out, I think the thought process was around having liberty from existing options you had. <laughs> so I think, it, and we are kind of traditional in our thinking, you know, liberty wireless, but does that resonate with our target segment, 20 to 45? So like I was saying, those guys are looking for, you know, something to get more out of existing offerings that they have. So Circle's life, get more out of life, it, it kind of resonates from that perspective. And as we thought about what communication is all about, it's really about having a circle of friends, uh, you know, uh, that kind of a circle kind of brings it all together. Um, for us, that resonated better with our, uh, with our target segment. Uh, we looked at many options, um, and Circle's life really came out on top. Now, we know that you've uh, implemented the Elite Core solution. Yeah. Uh, what sort of capability is that, has that given to you? Um, so that's the, uh, um, in, uh, let me just frame that in the context of what we're doing. So when I talk about the operating system, it comprises of three layers, essentially. There's a customer-facing layer where we've done a ton of work. Then there's a middle layer where we do all the order management, where we do all the payments, where we do delivery systems, uh, where we have um, customer analytics, all of these things. That, and then at the bottom layer, we have OSS, BSS systems, where we do a lot of the billing stuff. And all of the cloud billing is something that we use Elite Core for. Uh, there's a standard box that Elite Core has, and we've, to be honest, modified it a fair bit to adjust into our, our box. And that's kind of how they helped us. Yeah. 
Singapore is a very competitive market. Yeah. Um, there are three established um, established telcos out there, and there's probably another couple coming to the market soon. Yeah. Um, what's your strategy, not just to survive, but to thrive in the Singapore market? I think great question. So it kind of goes back to uh, what we wanted to build over here, which is linked to having a very asset light model. So if you take a very traditional approach to the market, you could say you need to be 10, 15% of the market to break even. Or traditional MVNO, which is very heavy and does the kind of things we do, you still need 8, 10% of the market to break even. What we managed to build is something so light and something, um, you could say it's something so agile and light, it really allows you to break even at a much lower point.